All right, appraisers, this is Brandon yet again. And in this Spark Spotlight video, we're going to be covering the site value tab within the cost data site of Spark. And essentially, this site value tab is meant to help you uh, just help basically show you all the calculations that were performed for either site extraction, allocation, or just showing you your vacant land sales in a visual way so to help you more easily decide what your opinion of site value is for your subject. So let's go ahead and get into it. Now, you can see here, I'm on the cost data side of Spark. I have a subject here. Uh, I, I've already obtained the cost data results. So I hit get cost data when it was there, got that all loaded in. I have the cost data or cost approach run on six different properties. These are actually comps in my grid that I ran it on. And that's all done. Everything's ready to go. So now, once I have my site values for my comps, I can just click site value tab right here, switch to that. And now here, this might look a little strange to you the first time you see this, but what we did is try to come up with a visual representation of those properties that you just loaded in. So first of all, here we have average, median, and regression. And actually, let's just, don't worry about this allocation side for now. Let's just look at the site extraction widget right here. So essentially, you can see there's nothing here that's blank. This checkbox isn't marked. I've got nothing for opinion of site value. So nothing's happened yet. So essentially what you're looking at is the visual representation, as I said, of the site values and adjusted site values, as you can see in the legend here, of those six properties that were on the cost data side right here. So what that means is, well, here, let me just explain it. So if you think of this like these six properties and these blue and red dots, think of these the way you would think about your sales comparison approach. Let's say you had six comps in your grid. So what these blue dots represent are the sale price of those six comps in your grid. So in this case, it's not actual sale price, it's the site value that's been extracted from those properties. So that's what these blue dots are. And what the red dots represent would be, if you were to compare it to your sales comparison approach, that would be essentially what your final adjusted value is for each of those comps in your grid. So these red dots are after adjusting it to your subject. And in this case, it's the same thing. We've basically adjusted those site values, which, um, so here, right here, for property one, 66,328, this has been adjusted to the subject site size. And let me show you what we mean by that. So right here, again, I can hover over this and you can see the site value in that little tooltip that pops up, it says in blue, 66,328. And after adjusting it to your subject, it's 66,183. Now there's, that's those numbers are almost identical. And that's because the subject site size is almost identical to the property one site size. You can see in the tooltip, it says the site size for property one is 7776. And my subject site size is 7759. So they're almost the same. That's why these blue and red dots are so close to each other. Now for, let's look at property three. So property three, the site value is 69,459, but the adjusted site value is 65,860 because that property is actually larger. It's, it's 8,183 square feet. So it, to adjust it down to the subject site size, it's actually 65,860. And the math is shown to you right there. So uh, the site value is 69,459 and price per square foot of that is $8.49. So all you do is you take that $8.49, multiply it by the subject site size, and that gives you the 65,860. Now, for those of you who, well, there's a couple things going on as well with that. So I understand that the further away in site size the property is from your subject, then the less accurate your price per square foot is gonna be because of the principle of diminishing returns, it, it might be a little bit off. So you would expect that a property that's much larger than your subject will probably have a smaller price per square foot. And then properties that are significantly smaller than your subject in turn will also have or should have a price per square foot that's a bit higher than your subject. So you just got to consider that when you're looking at these red numbers. And actually in this case, it actually it works out pretty well because property six here is actually much lower than these other red dots. So, and you can see the range here on the x-axis is, is 50,000 up to 90,000. So this one is actually lower. The adjusted site value is 61,886, which is much lower than these other red dots. 
And that actually makes sense because this property is much larger than the subject and it's also larger than most of these other properties. So you would expect the price per square foot to be lower and that's essentially what happened. The price per square foot is lower, which is why this red dot is, is lower on the scale than the other red dots. So let me show you how I use this essentially. So uh, I'm going to kind of start over here. So you got your subject, you got your comps, everything's good. You click on the site value tab and then what you do is you move this slider bar across the screen until it lines up with what you want to call the opinion of site value. So in this case, and, and the reason you want to see this in a, as in a visual representation is because it's a lot of times easier to line up what you want to call it because you can actually see it in this little widget right here. So I'm having this gray line run through as many properties as possible that I think it should run through. So comp one is almost identical in site size and everything to my subject. So I definitely want this line to correspond with comp one, unless there's some weird thing going on with comp one, like maybe it's sold too high or too low or whatever. Um, it should line up right on that. That dot should be on that line. And comp two is also very similar in site size. That red dot is still touching the line. Comp three, again, fairly close, touching the line in comp four. And then comps five and six are a little bit further away in site size, so I would expect them to be a little bit off. And that's exactly what happened in this case. Now, these below this hash line, these are actual, um, uh, they're other indicators. So right here we have the average. So this red dot is the average of all these red dots. And the blue dot is the average of all these six blue dots. And then this one right here, it, you can see is regression. And so what that means for regression is we actually plotted these six dots. Um, we'll talk about just the blue dots for now. So it plots those blue dots on a on a chart and then it runs regression on those data points and it gets a trend line essentially. And then what Spark does is it plugs into that trend line the site size of the subject and it gets a number. And in this case, that's the number it got. It got 65,807. And then for, it does the same exact thing on the red dots. And in this case for the red one, it got 65,877. They're almost identical. And so that's essentially what happens to when it calculates regression. And then lastly, what I wanna show you is if you don't really like looking at things in this visual representation, you want to see the actual numbers, all you do is you click show data right here. And then Spark shows you in this chart format exactly what's going on. So you can see properties one through six. You can see what the actual site value is from extraction. You can see the site size, the price per square foot, and then the adjusted number over here on the right. And then you can also see the averages, the medians, and the two regression numbers. Lastly, Spark down here shows you how things were calculated. It shows you the equation. It also, um, it, I, I'm sorry, and it shows you the regression equation. So you have the y equals mx plus b essentially. And all you do here is you, for x, you plug in your subject site size, 7759. If you plug that into these equations, that gives you this regression number, or I should say these regression numbers. So yeah, that's the way it works. Uh, so hopefully this kind of helps you out. It's probably gonna take a few times of using it before you get the hang of it, but essentially all you do is you come in here, you move this bar to kind of line up with what you think best represents what it should be, and you get a number. And so that's essentially your number from site extraction. And then over here we have allocation. Now in my area, allocation is not as accurate. And you can see these blue dots and red dots are all over the place. So it doesn't mean as much, especially since the red dots are all over the place. That kind of tells you that this doesn't have as much value. You shouldn't give it as much weight because things are kind of wacky. They're all over the place. So I'm gonna try it the best I can. Maybe I'll call it somewhere between properties one and two. We'll call it 46,000. So basically from extraction, I've got 66,000. From allocation, I've got 46. So my final opinion of site value, I'm gonna place a lot more weight on extraction. It appears to be much more accurate to me. And, and I know that it is in my area, so I'm gonna call it 60,000. So I'm still gonna give some weight to allocation, but mostly to extraction and call it 60,000. Now when I click on cost data, I see that it put my site value in for my subject right there. And now I have a final total cost uh, value from, from the cost approach here of $190,000. And you can see when I hover over this I, it shows me the actual math and it in now includes my site value of 60,000 to get to that 190. Okay, uh, again, I'd, uh, as in most of these cost data videos, I've run long. I apologize for taking so long. It's just 
this is done a little bit differently than probably you're used to, so I want to make sure and explain it well. If you have any questions at all, please contact us. You can click this gear icon and click contact us. It'll give you our email address and phone number, so don't hesitate to reach out anytime. Thanks, everybody, for watching.